show you guys how to use the stencil tool in a mesh mixer to add things like missing thigh pads or knee pads um, or word marks to your 3D models. So after you have your, your pieces sort of loaded in, um, you're gonna to wanna to go to the sculpt tool and you wanna make sure that one, that you set to this, this slider is overset to surface. Brush should be the draw max. The fall off should be square. Um, strength, depending on how raised you want the, the stencil to be, um, the higher the strength, the higher it'll be raised. Um, and then under refinement, you're gonna want 100% on refine, um, zero on reduce. And then smooth will be dependent on the type of stencil that you're using. You may want to play with that. So to load in a stencil, you hit this plus sign, navigate to where uh, your stencil is. Here's a three ridge thigh pad, okay? And then select it. And then it'll show up in your list here. So here's the thigh pad. And that one it there. I want to get a nice straight on view of the thigh where I want that thigh pad to go. And then I just a single click and thigh pad is added. Now, once you add that on, you may want to go back and do some additional smoothing. So I may set this back to volume and then robust smooth, bring this brush down. And then I might just come in and kind of just up the strength there and just kind of smooth out the edges here. I don't need, uh, don't you need, I don't need to do too much smoothing. Um, so I've already kind of um, made it smooth in the stencil and we'll go over how to create these stencils too if you wanna, wanna make your own. But with a one button click, you can add your thigh pad just like that. I have a few more. Here, so I'll go back to surface, go to stencils. Um, I've got a hex pad. Here's a no ridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the no ridge um, thigh pad to my stencil library. Go in here and select it. And we'll go ahead and we'll add it on this thigh here. So I'm gonna have to Up the size a little bit. Let me go one more and click. And now we've got a no ridge thigh pad. Now I could go back in and smooth out with the smooth tool, but you've already seen um, how to do that. What I'm what I am going to do is earlier I had created um, this is Aaron Jones. Uh, his personal logo, which he has on his thigh pad. I created this stencil earlier. So I could go and select this one now. And then right over the top of the thigh pad, the first stencil I laid, I can just click on that. And now we've got his logo on there. Now, that is really high. So I wanted to undo that and lower the strength here so that it's a little bit more subtle. And that's a little bit better. Now the angle's a little bit off. You have to play with the uh, sort of the angle of the model before you before you hit it. So I can just undo and one more time. There you go. It's still a little high, so I could lower the strength even more, or I could go back um, with like my with my with my smooth tool and just kind of just lightly go over it so that it's real subtle. But yeah, so you can stack the stencils like that to add things like um, custom thigh pads like a lot of the players are wearing. So those are the thigh pads. I want to show you something else that you can do with these brushes here. And I'm also going to show, this will demonstrate where um, you sometimes are going to run into some, um, some issues with these stencils. So we'll, what I want to do is I want to add um, the Jags logo uh, to the bumper of this this helmet okay like the raised bumpers that we have or the raised bumper logo so i'll go in here um, i've already created the jags logo and gotta shrink that down 
And when I go to put it on here, it looks awful. Um, this looks horrible. It's just a mess. And the reason why, um, I'm gonna undo and hit W to turn on wireframe, is there's not enough um, mesh for it to work with. Um, this needs to be a lot, a, a much more dense mesh for that logo to show up. So what I'm gonna do is select this, go to edit, and I'm going to generate face groups. There we go. What I want is the bumper here to be its own color, uh, so it's its own face group. So I'll hit accept. And then I'll go to the select tool, and I'm just going to double click on the bumper. And because it's its own face group, it's the only thing that gets selected when I um, double click. I'm gonna hit W again to see the wireframe. And then I'm gonna go edit and remesh. And I'm going to up the density. Okay, max density. And then hit accept. And I know from trying this earlier that that's not enough. So I'm gonna run it one more time, remesh. Up it all the way. And hit accept. And that's a little bit, uh, that's a bit closer to what we want. You want a really dense mesh for these, um, for these stencil brushes to really work. So I can go back into sculpt. And we'll try it right here. I'll turn off the wireframe. Yep, there we go. And I'll try to get it right in the center. And there you go. That's how you could add sort of a um, that raised logo on the bumper look, just like that. Okay, so that's how you use the the stencil brushes. Um, how to make the stencil brushes? So I made mine in Adobe Illustrator. Um, you can do it in any drawing program. You essentially just need a black and white um, image. Okay, um, and the way these stencils work is whatever is black does not raise at all. Whatever is white is going to raise the highest. So you play with um, shades of gray to sort of, um, you know, for example, here's the three ridge thigh pad. So the darker gray is not going to raise up as much as the lighter gray. And so that's how you get your ridges. So I've got a couple different thigh pads on here. And now with these knee pads over here that I was playing with, um, I applied a gradient within here. So that's gonna help sort of round out and smooth out that shape. Um, now with the, if you just go and create, um, you know, your stencils that are, where they're this sharp, um, you're gonna get really sharp lines in your stencil they're not going to be uh, it's not going to have smooth smooth edges like a thigh pad would so to resolve that you could do one of two things you could use the stencil like this know that it's going to be pretty um rigid uh, and then use the the smoothing tools and mesh mixer to smooth it out or you can sort of apply more of a of a gradient. So what the way I was sort of making these stencils is I would start in Illustrator, I would draw out um, the basic shape. See, I'm playing with um, uh, some shoelaces and pant laces. Um, here's the hex pad. Um, but once I finish the stencil in here, I would paste it into Photoshop, and then using tools like um, you know Gaussian Blur. Okay, I would I would blur the stencil. So now, with this edge so soft like this, this will be a nice smooth sort of rounded um, edge on the stencil. And here the 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 ridges are going to be real subtle, and because they have this fade, they're going to have a nice bit of roundness to them. Um, so the same thing with the hex pad. You know, a little bit of blur on the um, the honeycomb pattern and then um, sort of darker shading around. Um, with the no ridge, just a, a, just a, slight, um, just a slight blur um, for this outer lip here. 
Um, here's the vintage pads I was working on. Um, a two ridge pad. Again, just using the gauge and blur to kind of smooth that out. Now, something like the um, like the bumper logo, that can be um, crystal clear like this because that should be have like a more rigid look to it. So, um, whatever graphic program you want to use so to create your stencils, this is how you got to do it. It's got to be you know black and white, um, and then you have to save it out as a PNG file. Um, save it as a PNG file, and that's what you'll be able to load into Mesh Mixer to use. So. I'm hoping this was helpful. Um, I'd love to see what you guys all come up with.